Hello everybody, it's Ruby here today, and I thought that I would recommend three popular science books that changed my worldview. Now before I get started, I just wanted to mention something about popular science books, and that's that the science community tends not to like these books very much. The reason is, is that they're marketed towards a large audience of people who might not have a background in the topics that they're discussing, so there tends to not be a very critical eye in the books, or they don't always create a very balanced viewpoint. I do partially agree, agree with this just because I am in psychology and university and you do learn a level of critical thinking that you wouldn't necessarily learn in um, any other setting just because you are exposed to a lot of papers and you do have to review a lot of things. But I have found that popular science books do give you a sort of overview of a particular topic and will sometimes overall present you with a different sort of idea that you wouldn't have already thought yourself which I think is really good if you're just starting out in a particular topic or if you want to see someone else's opinion on something that you're already researching. So obviously take these with a grain of salt. I particularly like them because I either agree with them or because they have changed how I've thought, but take them as you will. So the first book is The Self-Illusion by Bruce Hood. He is a psychology professor in a couple of reputable universities, and he presents um, the concept of how social psychology creates identity. Now, the Western world kind of views personality and identity to be a very static thing, something that doesn't change, or something that only changes if there's a large amount of trauma or that sort of thing. Well, there's a lot of psychological studies that say that your personality changes depending on who you're with, or it changes um, because of the kind of childhood you had, or how people treat you, or otherwise talk to you. So he goes from basically birth and neuroplasticity, and he goes all the way to adulthood and then to technology to sort of explain um, the concept of identity. And I really like this book because I was actually reading it while taking a social psychology class, so it neatly summed up a lot of social psychology experiments and sort of presented a lot of really cool ideas. A lot of these psychological experiments are also things that people have used for other hypotheses and other theories, so if you read this book you'll also get sort of an overview of more of the social psychology side and different very common experiments that people have done. The second book is Sex at Dawn by Christopher Ryan and Cecil de Jetha. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. This is actually a book that I talked about in my 10 most influential books tag, which is always a link down below. Um, this was the first popular science book I ever read. Um, I picked it off of the shelf because I had been interested in these sorts of topics in biology and psychology, and I thought that it was an interesting read. Subtitle, or like the second title, is How We Mate, How We Stray, and What It Means for Modern Relationships. And their main hypothesis is actually talking about monogamy and polyamory and how it might have been that uh, we as primates were more polyamorous or maybe even serial monogamers rather than having just monogamy. And this is a fairly controversial book because it sort of takes a couple of theories of evolutionary psychology and turns them on their head, and evolutionary psychology is already a pretty risky topic just because it often segments segments the genders and behaviors of genders and things like that. The particular reason I liked this book, other than the content, was because it changed my worldview. It changed how I viewed a lot of experiments because I realized that theories and experiments that people had been doing in the past could be interpreted in different ways. And that doesn't mean that this book is more correct than those experiments, but it does mean that you can interpret them in very different ways. And I was in high school when I read this, so I didn't realize that there was different ways of reading research and stuff, and I hadn't sort of discovered that yet. And since then, I've been reading a lot of research in university that has also talked about this. So in academia, they mention a lot of these sorts of things like bonobos and anatomy and all that fun stuff, but it's not necessarily as well known in the general public yet despite the fact that this was a New York Times bestseller. The only thing that I would warn people about if they were going to read this is that this book is very explicit. It is not sexually explicit, but it does talk about anatomy and sex and um, the biology behind it. And so if you find that uncomfortable, you can always 
take that with a grain of salt or skip a couple of chapters or do whatever, but it's not smutty, it's just straightforward. The third and final book is Delusions of Gender, How Our Mind, Society, and Neurosexism Create Difference by Delia Fine. Now I had heard quite a bit about this book, but I was really iffy about it because this is also about psychology. It is written by a research associate and also psychologist. I was scared that this would discredit a lot of psychology experiments that I do really like and that it would talk sort of badly about psychology because I wasn't really sure what this was about and I thought that my um, basis of psychology would sort of come tumbling down. But I started to realize in a lot of classes that I took that if I would research things about gender or about sociology or about psychology that Cordelia Fine would come up quite a bit so I thought I would bite the bullet and read it. So I wouldn't consider this as engaging as the last two books that I've read, but it is definitely as interesting. And this talks about um, psychology experiments that have to do with gender. So rather than the anthropology or sociology that was mentioned in Sex at Dawn, this one is more about when they try and figure out gender differences in the brain. And the reason that this is particularly interesting is because she cites a lot of studies that have done meta-studies, where they've looked into a lot of the methodology or discussions in other research papers to see how they've conducted their studies or have you know, uh, concluded a lot of things. And what she discovered is that there were a lot of people who had a confirmation bias where they expected an outcome and their paper reflected that, where maybe they hadn't had the best results, but they still thought that they were correct. Um, she also mentions a lot of other sort of experiments um, having to do with like resumes and names and um, genders and that sort of thing that aren't really in the public eye, but have been sort of well known in this general form of research. The main thing I like about this book, other than the content, is the fact that it also changed my mind quite a bit. It made me a lot more critical about the papers that I read because it made me understand that you should not be taking psychology papers at face value. And if you do, maybe conduct your own secondary experiment on the same thing. Because she has mentioned a lot of experiments that were talked about in the general public that were became big phenomenons about newborns and how long they look at things and stuff, only to realize once people actually looked into the experiments that they had been conducted um, in ways didn't control for, you know, newborns being tired or being cranky or that sort of thing. So. This is definitely a book to make you think more critically and a book to make you think very differently about sort of the scientific field. So those are my three favorite popular science books. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you guys look for them yourself. Comment down below what your thoughts on popular science are or if there are any books that you particularly like in the popular science genre. And of course, thumbs it up, like it, subscribe, share it, do your thing if you particularly liked this video, and I will talk to you guys later.